We can go live. All right, looks like we're live. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the channel, as always. So a minute ahead of time here, just making sure that everything's working. And I can already see the message systems working. Good morning, Ray. Good to see you. How are you doing today? It's uh, freezing here in northern Arizona, so uh, a little bit of a chill out there this morning. I'm still trying to warm myself back up. So today is going to be a different one. Uh, you saw the title. Definitely... Uh, Definitely want to talk about this one, and actually, I normally don't do uh, drone industry news or anything here. Usually, uh, the folks who come here are looking for practical applications for drones for building their own small businesses. So we talk more about um, what we can do to uh, grow our businesses and the types of services we offer. But I wanted to talk about the Drone Service Providers Alliance. Um, I had gotten an email the other week from SUAS News, and I don't know about you, but I am subscribed to a lot of different channels, so I always have a full inbox every morning. And I had seen uh, the notice, the release of the Drone Service Providers Associate or Alliance, and I had meant to talk about it. I've got a crazy list of, uh, here's the little notebook. When, I, when I'm doing other work uh, in the studio for other clients, if I think of something, I always jot things down. For live streams and so I wanted to talk about the launch of this new group why why it's important to me why I signed up with it this weekend and a little history of my own drone flight so what you're looking at on screen here is my first DJI that was purchased at the end of 2013 and uh, we started playing with it in 2014 we had started doing websites for RV parks and resorts since we were full-time RVers so, and by that, let's see right here real quick. Um, when I say full-time RVers, that's my 25-foot Airstream. So, good morning, Michael. Good morning, Davenport. Good to see you guys here. Thanks for stopping in this morning. So, as I was saying, um, our drone journey started at the end of 2013. We ordered one of, the, uh, one of the first series of Phantoms, and one of the ideas for working with RV parks and resorts was that we could do aerial work for these folks. So it was very exciting. I think we ordered from B&H Photo Video and um, you can see the initial drone. At the time I had a Hero 3 Plus. So we got the DJI drone in. I started uh, learning about it and doing more online research and I found quickly that I probably wasn't going to be offering services to any of the um, to any of the RV parks and resorts we were working with because it was a pretty complex thing at the time. There was no Part 107 test. Uh, back then, I started reading about the 333 exemption. So back in the day, the 333 exemption was what drone pilots used to operate commercially from 2014 to 2016. And we had gotten the uh, drone right at the start of 2014. So it was not an easy, straightforward process, at least in my mind. So while we did some initial testing with the drone and a couple of flights, and we did do them in Class G airspace, uh, there is a huge learning curve for me there. But so we did a little testing. But in the end, this DJI became, well, a really expensive paperweight that rode around in my Airstream and then sometimes in my truck as well. Uh, unfortunately... As I realized, there was a lot more to the 333. And while I was very interested in providing services to clients, um, the drones hadn't quite gotten there yet. As you see on this picture, I've got that Hero 3 and it's connected to the drone. So I had no camera control, I had no camera feed. So knowing where I was shooting, knowing what I was getting was a matter of eyeballing the drone, seeing where I had it in relation to other subjects. Um, including this one from a dry camping area in Arizona. So those are all saguaros. That's me right there. So the drone is very close by. Um, everything, of course, is visual line of sight for that, since I had no kind of feed. And as I was saying, as I was learning about the Part 333 and all of the other FAA requirements, it, it really dawned on me that, um, that I shouldn't be playing with this right now for my client work. I wanted to make sure everything was legit and that I wasn't getting myself or anyone else in trouble. 
So there were a couple of flights over the years with the drone just for fun, uh, for my own enjoyment, going out into the middle of nowhere and just doing a little drone flight and a little video capture. Never landed on YouTube or anything. It was just for my, uh, you know, my own learning experience. Fast forward to, um, to 2017 and a conversation with a friend who encouraged me to look into the Part 107 test. Uh, I did that, and um, I think I started studying that in uh, August of 2017. I got my Part 107 in September, and uh, I had a big learning curve. So back then, I had signed up with DroneU, and that's where I stumbled across a person named Vic Moss, which is going to be very important coming up here. Um, when it comes to the Drone Service Providers Alliance. So um, I started taking these classes on Drone U. I actually signed up with them for a couple of months as I knew I had a lot to learn. Excuse the moving around. It's a different chair this morning. Um, so anyways, I spent a couple months with Drone U on their uh, Facebook group and on their main site, I studied for my Part 107, and then learned about other drone issues and topics. And one of the big ones that stood out to me was the fact that there was no community-based organization representing small drone pilots. Like I said, this channel, you know, it's usually talking to other small drone, uh, other small drone business owners like myself and talking about the types of tools that we have at our disposal. So let's go ahead and minimize this one. So as you can see, I got a couple things pulled up for you guys this morning. Um, let's go over to the first tab. So not too long ago, Drone Service Providers Alliance made their announcement that they were forming this new, um, not working group, it's an advocacy group for drone service providers. And um, I'd read the article in SUAS News. Let's pull that one up. And it's been popping up in other drone news outlets as well. So uh, people are now becoming aware of this, but it's not, it's not something big or widely known yet, in my opinion. So um, if you could hold on one sec, I've got a noise in the other room, so we're just going to disappear for one minute, and I will be right back. Sorry about that, guys. Just like one moment. Okay, hopefully that should be better now. Sorry about that. We've got uh, a dual competing things this morning, so we've got a box of tissues over to the right. Um, we did spend the weekend uh, house hunting and running around town, so um, nobody's sick in the house, but it's just, uh, you know, the hot, cold, in and out of that stuff. So anyways, um, the other week I'd seen a notification about the Drone Services uh, Service Providers Alliance, and it got lumped into my to be read folder. I'm sure we all have that. Uh, 20 bucks a month, minimum pr uh, pricey to you. Yeah, I understand, Corey. And that's, um, you know, one of the things I'll be letting folks on this channel know um, as they start developing this group. And I'll keep you up to date on it. And um, I can understand we, we've got to, you know, uh, set our budgets um, in accordance with what we can be doing right now. The reason why I've signed up with the Drone Service Providers Alliance is pretty simple for me. Um, since I started learning in 2017, I'd always been wishing for this group and wishing for a group that was put together by, um, by some notable people in the drone services industry. And that's what's happened with the Drone Service Providers Alliance. So Vic Moss is one of the founders here. So there's two founders. And I'm going to get the other gentleman's name wrong. Um, I think it's Kenji. And um, both Vic and Kenji have been strong advocates for, uh, for drone pilots for quite a while now. When I was a member of Drone U and taking some of the classes there, uh, I, took, uh, I took some of Vic Moss's, and I had actually corresponded with him a couple times when I had questions back in 2017 about an authorization I was doing. And Vic provided a lot of great, um, great information for me. And he was also being an advocate at the time. So here's a guy who's got his own imaging services business, and he's working with educating drone pilots, and he's advocating for small drone organizations. 
those were all pretty powerful things. And as I started developing my own drone business over the years, one of the people who popped to mind whenever I thought about something like this, um, an organization for the smaller businesses, Vic Moss always popped to mind. But like I said, here's a guy who's got a lot of things going on. Um, he's got his own business interests as well. And you can only ask people to do so much, right? But he's been being a voice for all of us for a long time. Let me take a look. Whenever I look over to the right for new folks on channel, it's because uh, we've got the chat window going on. Similar UK scenario. For a long time, we've had the PFQ license, which costs thousands to obtain, uh, due to be replaced by a licensing system, which is cheaper. Yeah, good guys. Uh, it's 45. Yep, yeah, I know this is a new life. Yeah, and so that's one of the things I wanted to say, Corey, um, in looking into this. So over the years, um, you know, Kickstarter or GoFundMe or different things, I've backed different projects. Um, I've backed some new comic book series. I've got some friends who work in the comic industry. Um, you know, I've backed other things as well. And, you know, this is a brand new alliance. They're just getting the word out there. And, you know, I'm not advertising for them or anything. But what I am saying is, you know, this was a no-brainer for me to sign up to because, you know, my business is moving more and more toward just the drone side, which is fantastic. So I'm thrilled about that. You know, we're about a 50-50 split now with the drones and the web work and the consulting work. But I've always felt that we didn't have a large enough voice uh, in D.C., and while we've had all these great groups, you know, we've got the SUAS News, we've got all these different websites, we've got all these different um, flight businesses, all these different training, uh, you know, drone training classes out there. Um, we still haven't had that advocacy group. And with um, remote ID coming up and with new rules coming up, I'm sure there's going to be new rules, you know, in the pipeline going forward as the drone service industry expands. I really feel like there does need to be a place for the small provider's voices. Would I like to become a large provider? Absolutely. Uh, even then, there still needs to be you know, a place for our voices to be heard so that when regulation and new rulings come out, um, we're represented. And right now, I don't feel like we're represented. And last spring, you know, when the whole remote ID issue came up, we saw thousands upon thousands upon thousands of drone pilots who were writing in their concerns during the comment period. And the big question is, were they listened to? Were we listened to? Having some kind of organization like this alliance, I think, will get us a little more attention where we need that attention. So I'm just popping through some of the other channels that I follow along with that I've seen announcements on. So, of course, Drone XL, I always follow along with them. And I also follow along with several of the forums. I'm one of the quiet forum members. I don't say anything. And I've also dropped off of the Facebook groups because just too much stuff to keep up with. If you're building your small business, you have the things that you need to focus on in your small business. And, you know, you have your flights, you have your clients, and there's only so much of this news that you can read at any point in time. I think developing an organization like the Drone Service Providers Alliance they're going to be looking at some of this for us. Maybe they can actually take some off of our plates when we're trying to coordinate growing our businesses and doing the right thing. Let me take a look back on over. I agree it's a bit steep, but uh, being part of an organization that protects us against policies is huge. We've really needed that. Thanks, Davenport. Yeah, I'm totally with you on that one. That's why I signed up. So I probably would have signed up the other week when I first saw it, but like I said, it went into my to-be-read file. But... um last week when I was catching up on all my reading and I saw who was behind this and um, let's see here about and so let's just pull it up and then we're going to shift gears to some practical applications again today too so it's not all just about this because this is still developing so like I said I'm going to keep you up to date on this channel for those of you who are regulars here and so as I see this evolving I'll let you know and, you know, no pitch to, uh, to sign up with them now. But I think in the interests of my business, I needed to sign up with them now because, you know, where remote ID is going, how that's going to impact the job sites that I'm doing, how that's going to impact what I'm bidding. I told you about the 14-month uh, contract that I bid on uh, just a few weeks ago. 
The construction company has accepted my bid, but now they've got some other hangups with uh, local and uh, county issues. So they will be using us for their uh, flights, and it's just a matter of when their project is actually going to start. So we had one start date, and that looks like it's getting pushed out to another point in time. But in looking at that area, I noticed there are some wilderness areas close by to some of the working areas. So I, you know, I need a little more information on where we're going to be flying and where this project is going on. And then I might have to have some conversations with the FAA. Well, if that's the case, then I want to make sure, you know, that I can be heard by them as well. So the mission here for them is to create a positive environment for drone service providers advocating for reasonable regulation um, through positive advocacy. That's what we've been needing. Like I said, we're all signed up with different channels and different classes, and all of these things are great, and we're learning a lot. But if our voices aren't heard in Washington, you know, it could be that the smaller service providers just get pushed out of it. I know a lot of people are concerned about remote ID, and I'm concerned about remote ID. I don't mind the overall concept, but the execution is what we're worried about. So this is where a group like the uh, Drone Service Providers Alliance, DSPA, I'm going to say DSPA from now on, um, could come in for us. So Kenji, um, he has been advocating uh, for drone pilots for quite some time now. And I don't know as much about him as I do with Vic Moss because I've actually followed along with a lot of Vic's work after being a member at DroneU. And I like Vic's approach to um, regulations and his information as an instruction is great. And like I said, I thought years ago, hey, Vic Ma should be one of these people behind this. Well, good work, Vic. You're one of the people behind this. So from one small channel, thank you very much for being part of building this. And I'm looking forward to see how it goes. Let's take a look back over here. Um, have you looked into the Remote Pilot 101? Um, oh, that's one of those sites. Um, you know, I'll tell you, a lot of these sites with their, um, for passing the 107 and, you know, all the other different classes they give, um, a lot of them do a great job. You know, all of them have the same information and it's also information that's available to us freely as well um, or, you know, at low cost as well. I mean, you can get um, the materials from the FAA and there's other guidebooks as well. But there are a lot of great channels out there who've got fantastic classes. So, you know, it depends on your learning style. Some of them are a little different from each other. But in the end, they're all helping to get us, you know, um, prepped for our Part 107s or the flight work that we're going to do depending on the classes that they offer. So, yeah, I've seen, you know, I've seen all of these different ones. There's so many um, uh, folks who can provide the Part 107 training and training beyond that. So, you know, it's just a lot of them will give you free previews and things. So I say, you know, when you're looking into those things, go ahead and check out their free previews, see if their teaching style matches with your personality, and uh, take it from there. So scrolling back up here, um, you know, they've got the join us, so you already saw the prices. And like I said, I'm going to let you know how this develops, because this is still a very brand new organization. So they're still roughing out the website. And there's not a ton of information yet. Um, you know, some of the benefits I have not taken advantage of yet. So I didn't set up my own page on there or anything. And I've got to still fill out my profile information. Um, I'll, I'll do that in good time. I just wanted to sign up to it now because I also want to give the founders of this, um, you know, notification that people are interested. So I think those of us who are early adopters and um, start supporting this organization We'll let them know that they've got some traction, they've got some interest, and they've got drone pilots who are behind them and who are willing to roll the dice on this. So unlike a Kickstarter or a GoFundMe or something, um, you know, seeing that backing up front is going to tell them if there's an interest in the community. And um, then we can see, you know, which direction they grow in. But so once again, I just got overly excited last week about it, jotted this down and said, I need to share this with everybody. Um, like I said, when I started out in uh, 2014, and I started learning about the Part 333 and you know, reading through different forums and DJI forums, it was overwhelming. And I think that for the small service operators like ourselves, um, we need someone to cut through some of that red tape for us 
and um, you know get us get us reasonable regulation so that we can share the skies safely um, and effectively with other people who are going to be offering drone service as well. We know the big one, Amazon and all those other carriers. How are they going to impact us? Are they going to impact the smaller pilots, um, the uh, small drone, drone service groups? Um, are they going to take away from where we can fly? Are they going to add to our voices? That's where I think we need a group like this. So under their members, they, they've got a business directory, so they've got industry best practices. Um, looks like they'll be doing some continuing education. And the big part that interested me is advocacy. So I am not looking at this group as someone who's going to be offering additional training or anything to me for my business. I'm looking at this group that they will be representing my interests as a small drone operator. So there you go. So there was my excitement about it. And like I said, you know, you don't have to sign up to it right away. But I think a great way to indicate to, um, to the DSPA um, that there is an interest out there is signing up with them. So the join us, um, let's take a look at that. I had just done the basic one personally, that $20 a month. Now keep in mind, I've had a small business since uh, 2008. I used to be a co-owner of a gallery here in Prescott before I started doing the web work and the drone work. And uh, I was a member of PPA for years. That's the Professional Photographers Association who also does advocacy for photographers and education. And, um, you know, they're a really robust organization for professional photographers. This, you know, basically the PPA, I've always been waiting to see something like the PPA come about for the drone industry. So seeing these two huge names and advocacy got me super excited. So there we go. All right, I'm going to wrap up on that one. So I would suggest checking them out. Uh, bookmarking their web page, keep up with the information they're putting out um, for members and non-members alike, and then you can make your decisions over time. And, you know, I've spent so much money over the years on different groups, uh, different learning groups, you know, different advo advocacy groups, and um, $20 a month, if they can help safeguard um, the skies for me and for the type of work I'm going to do, then I'm very excited about it and I can get behind them and I can uh, add a little. So I'm only doing the $20 a month. I'm not doing the big spending. But uh, as you can see, they've got uh, higher tier platforms and I think that would probably be in the interests of larger service groups as well. All right, before, uh, before we go away from those photos from the uh, desert. So when I had first gotten that drone back at the, it was like Christmas time of 2013, we'd ordered it in. And we got it, and then we hit the road because we full-timed with the Airstream. We actually worked from the road, so it was amazing. We could park out in the literal middle of nowhere, and with a network connection, I could still get my job done. So that was awesome. And it was also interesting to get to fly the drone around a little to um, show off the Airstream and show off some of the unique places that we visit and work from. So... You know, this photo right here, once again, there was no gimbal, there was no shutter or anything. It was either, you know, telling the uh, GoPro to take a photo every couple of seconds or this was stripped out of a video clip. But um, can you imagine? So that was 2013-2014 uh, technology. Here we are in 2020. And, you know, we've got things like the, um, the Air 2 and the Mini. And, you know, it's just incredible how much these things have evolved and will continue to evolve. So let's hit that. And just for everyone who's always, you know, saying, is Jody real? Good morning, CJ. How are you doing this morning? Good to see you here. So Jody is a real person, and she's a real person sitting in front of an Airstream and a Nissan Titan. So there you go. And just one more quick shot with the drone when we were first taking a look at it after the unboxing of it. By the way, off -air airportgear.com, I'm not advertising here for that. Um, that's a buddy of mine uh, that I worked with in West Virginia and Ohio when I was doing a database for gas and oil group. And um, he's actually an avid bush pilot. And um, so he sells weird gear for, uh, for folks who are interested in flying off airport. And then we've also got just another from our trip when we had first opened up that, uh, that DJI uh, Phantom, uh, camping in the desert with a couple other uh, Airstream friends. So we've got our Pelican cooler out there. So that was what, February of 2014. 
Um, that spring, we spent uh, a good bit of time wandering and also staying put and um, also getting some fun star trails and things. But it was, it was a huge disappointment to me in 2014 as I was reading about the 333 and everything you had to go through um, to commercially work with your drones. And that's kind of why the drone got shelved for a while until a friend of mine encouraged me in 2017 to investigate the Part 107 exam. So big thumbs up to them for that. All right, we're going to close that one up, and we're going to do something else. We're going to use the drone service, uh, skip until next week. We're going to use the Drone Service Providers Alliance website as an example of something, because we've been talking about building our websites as well um, for our drone businesses. And um, I've had a lot of folks on my Patreon actually get in touch. And thanks for dropping the private messages. You are always welcome to leave your comments out in the open to share them with other people who are watching this video here or on Patreon or any of my other videos because other people do have the same questions as you sometimes. So if you leave those in the comments, other people can see them. But I'm always happy to take the private questions as well, so that's not a problem. But I just wanted to show you, so, you know, clearly the DSPA is just starting out, so they're roughing out their website. Looks really nice. It's compelling. You know, I like that front image. Um, we've got some gorgeous drone images going on and some information up front about who they are and what they're doing. And then they move into their, their uh, different segments, so we'll see that develop. But so if you like this website and you're building your own website and you say to yourself, boy, I want to I do something stylized like that. Well, there are some tools out there for you, as always. So um, let's take a look. I'm just looking up a thing called builtwith.com. So what is this? Well, if you're building your website, you're just starting out and you're seeing other websites that catch your eye. They don't have to be drone websites. They don't have to be service provider websites. Maybe you've got a favorite recreation website and you love the way they've got it laid out. And you're just wondering, what are the tools behind what they're building with? Well, oftentimes, and I'm not going to say 100% of the time, but built with can usually tell you the tools that are running in the background for showing that site. So I was curious when I first looked at the DSPA's website. I said I had a sneaking suspicion that they were probably built on WordPress. And so I ran over to built with, and I am not a robot. I am a real boy. There we go. So uh, the DSP uh, Alliance org technology profile so they're using wp forms okay we've got the google font api um recaptcha which you know everybody's usually got to screen out uh screen out those bots uh w3 total cash font awesome and so continuing on down mobile apple mobile web clips content delivery network for speeding things up and also securing you a little bit cloudflare and here we go also Content management system, WordPress. So they are using WordPress. So my suspicion was confirmed really quick. Um, so a lot of people are building with WordPress now. I, um, I started building with WordPress huh, 2004, 2005, somewhere in there. And that was before all of the great templates and um, you know, all the great tools uh, were out there. So if we were to take a look at AZ Drone, Dot net and I'm just gonna copy my address there and so you already know that um, that I build with WordPress but let's let's make sure here ah I just need to go back to do another search please I'll do it over there hit the look up really quick did it take that oh there we go okay so tools that I'm using slider revolution essential grid jetpack WordPress plugins so when you see a website that's appealing to you and you're thinking through the process of building your website, um, you know, you can take a look at other people's designs. That's not a problem at all. And, um, you know, a lot of these builders do similar things. So we use X-Theme, but there are tons of web page builders at this point uh, that you can take a look at and utilize. So it gives you the rundown on everything coming in, by the way. So I just thought that, that would be interesting to you as you're building your sites that if you had a particular site in mind that's appealing, that, hey, you could find out what they're building with and, um, you know, then start developing your own stuff uh, based on, you know, using them as an initial model. So there's nothing wrong with that. Just don't copy other people's text. It really dilutes um, folks' SEO. So 
in the end, people want to learn about your business, not somebody else's business that you cut and paste into your website. Placeholders are fine. So I know that you know we're adding to our portfolios every day. So you know if you're licensing other images for your website in the short term, just as placeholders, just so long as you get examples of your own product up um, as quickly as you can, that's fine. Let's take a look over, make sure I haven't missed anybody else's comments or anything. All right, so have not missed out on anybody else. Um, I have been doing a lot of web work the past couple weeks for one of my customers. That project is wrapping up this week, and we will be getting back into some of the stuff going on over at um, AZ Drone's Teachable site. So we'll be rounding out the, um, the post part 107 class, so that will be launched before the start of the new year. Sorry we got jammed up on these things, everybody, but when other projects come up, you've got to prioritize these things. So with that project wrapping up, um, we're going to be doing some new bundles over at the Teachable. So if you haven't already checked it out, I'll just give you this one really quick. It's az-drone.teachable.com, uh, az and um, links to that are also down in the show notes below. So there we go. All right, I can't believe this one actually went a lot quicker than I thought it was going to talking about the DSPA, but I think you get the idea. And for other people who stumble across this channel, if you haven't seen the news already, hopefully this is informative to you too. As I said before, I usually don't do a lot of drone news and I'm gonna continue not doing it. I thought this one was important enough. And as Corey said earlier, if you just joined now, you know, that is a little pricey per month, but you know, as, as you're building your business, as you're getting more clients in, you might find more value in being part of an organization like the uh, DSPA. But if you don't have it in the budget right now, that's understandable because you are building your business and maybe you're building it part time and you still have other things going on as well. You know, it's when you're ready to join it. But hopefully with two names like um, Kenji and Vic, and uh, their track records for advocating for us, um, even though we weren't part of an alliance or an organization with them, they've always been advocating for all of us as well. So I really do want to throw my support in behind them for taking this kind of effort and for the efforts that they've already put forward in the industry. All right, everybody, I'm going to minimize this one, and I am going to start getting ready for the rest of the business of the day. Um, before I do that, though, I'll take a look over... Uh, in the um, in the live stream chat, if anybody's got any other questions today um, about that DSPA um, or about that built with for checking out websites, uh, I'll just give it a moment. I hope everybody's still doing good. We've got 11 folks on channel this morning, and I didn't want to go on and on today. You get the idea, and I would suggest, you know, go and read about that group. And by the way, over the course of the past couple of years, I have signed up with other drone groups um, and spent money with them. Unfortunately, none of them really took off um, with a large membership or with representation. And um, I just think that uh, these two particular people are most likely the right people to be doing this for us. Davenport, thanks for the info and good luck with the house. Oh, yeah, the house hunt is still going on, Davenport. So I'll do a personal gear here really quick. We've gone into a couple of really gross houses recently. I mean, ugh. Um, I walked out of one and I said, I'm going to need a shower after being in this building. So far, not great. Um, two of the ones that we were interested in that we didn't even get to go see, we got notified, hey, we've already uh, leased this one out. Sorry about that. So um, we are going to look today again. So it's going to be the big hunt. And the other thing is I need to make sure that we've got an additional room so that I can still have a little studio space like this. Um, so yeah, keep your fingers crossed for us this week. Um, it's rapidly moving, that's for sure. Watching the real estate in the Prescott area, um, watching houses pop up and go away, pop up and go away um, when it comes to rentals. We still got a little bit of time. So we got a month and a half. So cross your fingers for us. All right, everyone, have an awesome start to the week. And uh, we will see you again next week here. Uh, I've still got a big list of um, topics that I've been wanting to do. And um, we will, uh, I think next week, we're going to talk about an $83 flight um, in zero feet without permission, um, without authorization. And no, that's not something I did. That's something somebody else did. And, uh, but I was called um, to do the job. I had an inquiry, and I told them 
uh, that I could not do that one where they were because they needed it turned around right away. So we'll talk about that next week, and we'll uh, talk a little bit about Lance authorizations and also about um, when you get someone really pushy on the line who needs you to get on a location that's literally sitting less than uh, 1,000 feet away from a helipad. So we'll, we'll hit that one next week and see what all of you guys think about it. Let's see. Um, they're recruiting Joan pilots to capture their new deer photos. Okay, I'm not sure. What's that one, CJ? Sorry, folks. So CJ just popped up. They're recruiting drone pilots to capture their nadir photos. I'm looking back up. What did I miss? Sorry for the pause there. I wanted to see what else he was saying. Um, well, if you could... Uh, CJ, pop that down into the comments after, and then I'll, I'll come back and take a look. Uh, I'm not quite following. Are, are you talking about the, the uh, $83 flight, or I'm not sure. Sometimes it feels like my stream's just really kind of lagging well behind me. Oh, well, sorry about that. I'll recheck the comments after to uh, see if CJ pops something else. And in the meantime, thanks again, everybody, and I'll look forward to talking to you again next week. Have a great start to the week. Oh, it's a program for global community. Oh. Send, a, send along a little more to me, CJ. I'm curious. Or uh, pop by, um, pop by azdrone.net. Send, um, send me something through the contact form, or if you've got my email, just do a direct email. All right, everyone, we'll talk later, and I hope you really do have a good week. We'll see you.